During the development of a powerful spacecraft, it is inevitable to encounter some errors, whether few or many. We cannot assert with 100% certainty that a rocket will be perfect from its first launch. Starship is a prime example. Despite its size and status as the most powerful rocket in the world, it has experienced issues during both testing and launch phases. This is not by chance. All of Starship's tests, even the ones that ended in explosions, achieve their intended objectives. SpaceX has adopted a different approach to rocket development known as rapid iteration. This involves building prototypes, testing them until they fail, addressing any issues that arise, and then building a new prototype to repeat the process. This development process for Starship has proven to be extremely effective. So effective, in fact, that although Blue Origin has been around longer than SpaceX, it has yet to achieve a single orbital launch. Meanwhile, SpaceX has repeatedly done so with the Falcon 9 and even with Starship, having completed four launches with the third and fourth launches reaching orbit and even landing in a designated area in the sea. The progress is evident, but it is still not complete. SpaceX must continue testing to fully realize the potential that Starship is being celebrated for. After the fourth Starship test flight, SpaceX and Elon Musk identified additional issues that need solutions to ensure the flights can meet their ambitious goals in the near future. First and foremost is the issue with the heat shield tiles. These are protective tiles that shield the spacecraft from the extreme temperatures during re-entry to Earth, playing a crucial role in Starship's reusability and human carrying capability. However, in the re-entry video of the spacecraft, it was seen that many heat shield tiles failed to perform their task, with several falling off and breaking apart. After all, SpaceX and Elon Musk have come up with a solution for this. The development of Starship's heat shield demonstrates SpaceX's commitment to continuous improvement. Initially, this system included about 18,000 heat shield tiles made from aluminum and silica fibers with various shapes, especially around the nose cone. These tiles were attached to the spacecraft's body using pins with a layer of white insulating material underneath that disperses the heat before it reaches the metal part of the spacecraft. Recently, SpaceX has made some significant changes on Ship 30. They started removing some of the heat shield tiles to add a layer of ablative metal, replacing the white insulation layer. They will then install new heat shield tiles that are twice as durable as the original ones. This ablative material is only placed in areas that experience the highest temperatures during re-entry. Notably, this ablative material is not reusable and may need to be replaced after each flight. This is considered a temporary solution and will be improved in future flights. However, for now, SpaceX is prioritizing other aspects of the Starship program. These improvements show that SpaceX is continually seeking ways to optimize the performance and safety of Starship, demonstrating flexibility in adjusting the design based on data and experience from previous test flights. Another issue that is no less important than the heat shield, which most of us might have overlooked, is the matter of the flaps. During the fourth flight, it was discovered that the position of Starship's flaps was not conducive to the spacecraft's heating process. SpaceX and Elon Musk have a solution for this. But first, you must understand the differences in the flaps of this giant spacecraft. As explained by Elon Musk in a live interview with YouTuber Everyday Astronaut, when Starship re-enters the atmosphere from low orbit, it typically returns with an empty cargo bay. Due to the center of gravity being at the rear engine section, the spacecraft naturally wants to flip engine first. To control the angle of attack, Starship uses a complex fin control system. The aft flap plays a primary role in controlling the pitch angle of the spacecraft. When extended, the aft flap increases drag and pushes the tail of the spacecraft up, helping to maintain an angle of attack of about 65 to 70 degrees relative to the ground. This prevents the engines from facing directly into the hot airflow. Meanwhile, the forward flaps have a secondary role. They are mainly used to adjust roll and fine-tune the pitch angle. When fully retracted, the forward flaps minimize frontal drag, preventing the spacecraft from being pushed backward. The interaction between the flaps is very complex. 
All four flaps influence each other and contribute to the control of the spacecraft. However, during high temperature reentry, the air is typically very stable and uniform. This means if the spacecraft operates correctly, the flaps will only need to move minimally to maintain the desired angle of attack. As the spacecraft descends lower into the atmosphere, where there's more turbulence, the control system will need to work more actively to cope with changing conditions. However, during the fourth flight, the flaps oscillated relatively strongly at the beginning of the heating process, indicating an abnormality not accounted for in initial calculations. To address this issue, engineers propose moving the forward flaps further back to the straighter part of the body and adjusting flap positions to be more leeward to minimize turbulence. Notably, for the upcoming fifth flight, SpaceX plans to test a type of movable seal, possibly a flexible fabric tube inserted into the gap, to maintain a tight seal when the flaps move. These improvements are not only aimed at optimizing airflow and thermal efficiency during atmospheric reentry, but also demonstrate SpaceX's commitment to continuously improving Starship's design based on data and experience from previous flights, working towards the goal of developing a fully reusable and efficient spacecraft. The next issue during the flight was with the engines. In Flight 2, the engines consecutively failed after the two stages separated causing B-9 to explode mid-air. In Flight 3, when B-10 was nearing its destination, the landing engine failed, leading to the booster explosion. In the latest flight, one engine failed after takeoff and another during landing. Fortunately, the landing process still went smoothly, marking the first time the Starship stages landed successfully. So what caused these issues? In SpaceX's update on Flight 3's problems, they stated that the booster's filter was blocked in the liquid oxygen tank, preventing a fuel from reaching the engine. In a recent Everyday Astronaut video, Elon Musk explained this in detail. Specifically, he revealed that ice caused the blockage. So why did ice appear? Starship's fuel includes liquid oxygen and liquid methane. When the fuels burn, they produce water and carbon dioxide. The freezing point of carbon dioxide is quite high, around minus 57 degrees Celsius or negative 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Water, as we know, freezes at zero degrees Celsius plus 32 Fahrenheit. In the extremely low temperature environment of liquid fuel, these substances easily freeze, causing blockages in the pipes. This revelation indeed clarified Starship's problem. So what's the solution to this? First, to address the blockage issue caused by carbon dioxide and water ice, Elon Musk mentioned adding a component he referred to as an ice strainer or ice catcher. While it's hard to visualize what this part looks like and how it works, it will be interesting to see how it functions in practice. Next, Elon Musk also mentioned upgrading the valve system, specifically using multiple parallel valve systems. This will double the valve's reliability. If one line fails, the engine can still operate on the other line. This ensures that the engine continues to function well, allowing the rocket to maintain direction even if a valve fails. Another factor Musk emphasized is the pressure during engine startup. In the previous flight, the startup pressure was quite low. Next time, they'll increase this pressure, making engine startup more reliable and reducing the need for all engines to ignite simultaneously. In addition to these internal improvements, the overall design will also change. In the future, parts such as bolts, flanges, and gaskets will be removed and replaced with welds. This will reduce weight, increase reliability, and decrease the risk of leaks. To enhance the engine's capabilities, SpaceX will also add an integrated cooling system and a secondary cooling system. These additions will help the engine withstand extreme re-entry temperatures, without the need for heat shields. These are great improvements, and I hope they'll be implemented soon, perhaps even on the next flight. At the end of July 2024, SpaceX is expected to conduct the next significant test flight of Starship. This fifth flight will use Ship 30 as the upper stage and Booster 12 as the booster stage. The objective is not only to test the improved heat shield, but also to verify the effectiveness of several other critical systems, such as the stable operation of the flap system and the Raptor engine system. 
The lessons learned from this effort will bring us closer to the goal of creating a fully reusable rocket, opening the door to the future of space travel. If you are interested in advancements in the space industry and want to stay updated on the latest developments, follow our channel. With SpaceX leading the way, the future of space exploration is wide open and full of promise. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.